everyone. Today, our special guest is from the UK, Karen Varley. She is a radical remission against the silent killer, ovarian cancer. So we're going to hear her incredible journey today. And she is uh, amazing and inspiring. And we talk a lot about her healing, positivity of the mind, diets, supplements, uh, positive affirmations, you know, social support, family support, um, you know, meditation. I mean, there's so many factors that she uh, really just uh, really fought this uh, cancer and uh, ended up being a, uh, and now is in remission. So, uh, you know, stay tuned. So here we go. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. You got to keep moving. Let's keep moving. Let's go. Don't quit till you got nothing left. You can either live your dreams or live your fears. Because you'll have bad times, but that'll always wake you up to the good stuff you weren't paying attention to. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. From the Cancer Suck Studios, you just tuned in to Life Lessons and Cancer Hope with Coach Steve. Listen, cancer ain't got nothing on me. Introducing an outstanding podcast, where we discuss relatable life lessons, ambition, motivation, and perseverance. Welcome back to another episode. Um, are you still fighting cancer or are you in remission right now? I am um, no evidence of disease. Um, I'm, okay. I'm a little bit of an, an, an anomaly. Um, and I think that the medical profession uh, sort of turned the textbooks on the head. Um, my cancer was quite an unusual one. Yeah, because yeah, I want to get into that. Also, talk about uh, the health, the healthcare yeah. in the UK, yeah. so people can kind of uh, compare to. Because you know, it's amazing. We have a lot of uh, we have a lot of money here for uh, for medical uh, tr- uh, treating, and, and but it, it doesn't go to us. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just it's just corrupt. I'm just. Uh, We've been waiting for universal health care. My brother's in Toronto and Canada, and, but I don't know if it'll ever happen here, unfortunately. But it's just, you know. It's a bit dire, that. the way it is. Yeah. And uh, so, and then you have, um, now, did you go gluten-free because of the cancer? Or you actually have a, uh, the celiac. Yeah, I am I was diagnosed celiac um, probably in 2000 and, well, let me just get my dates straight, something around 2013. Uh, I was having a bloating and I just went to the doctors. And, prior, prior to cancer. Yeah, um, yeah right, prior to prior cancer. cancer. Cancer was 2019. Um, actually it might've been more like 15 when I'm thinking about it now, it might've been 15, but, um, I'm what I call a good or a bad celiac, whichever way you want to think about it. So, yeah. uh, it doesn't affect me as bad as some people. So I do still occasionally have the things that I shouldn't have just because yeah, it's crap. <laughs> you know, you know, you, sometimes you just want yeah. some proper cake or proper bread. Yeah. Oh yeah, because so, uh, I've been doing gluten free. Have you? Is Dude, that not, a choice? Yeah, I mean, that's a choice though. Yeah. I mean, I'm not allergic to it. I don't have the the celiac disease, but and that's recent. I would say in the last month or so, mm. because of uh, the cancer. Yeah. Like I have stage. I don't know if you know anything about my story, but I have stage four colon cancer. Right. Yeah. Mets to the liver. Yeah. And we finally beat that. We beat the colon, and then I have mets to the lung, and. And then I did an ablation and my lung collapse. This was like maybe five weeks ago. And then I just got scans done last week. And then I have four more tumors that showed up. So I'm trying to um, uh, really do more mm-hmm. uh, strict, but not not like I still have like a, maybe a one or two meals a week that's uh, that has gluten in it. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you've got to enjoy yeah. life. We don't yeah, like yeah. to order out yeah. or something or go to a restaurant. Yeah. And, yeah. I, you know, it's, I don't it's, want to be it's tough to to take gluten out completely. It's really tough, and uh, I think particularly for for celiacs that are really affected, the cross contamination it's a nightmare, absolute nightmare. So it's good. It's yeah, good you, that I'm you still sure enjoying you things. Careful, it's right? it's good. You have to. You have yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then I don't know if you've read um, 
Have you read Radical Remissions or Radical Hope by Kelly Turner, PhD? I haven't, no. Um, when I was diagnosed, I read a book and I'll have to just have a look because um, I always forget the name of it. My partner's not here at the moment, but he's fantastic at remembering facts. I'm crap. I cannot remember facts and things. And I, I, I just, he has one of those memories and he can just picture things. And I, I don't have that memory. I'm good with other things. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. I'm um, always trying to get um, good books out to readers. To yeah, the there's a fantastic you know. book. It was wrote in the 70s um, by a radiologist, an oncologist, and also wow. um, somebody else. There are three, there are three authors. And it's, um, oh, here it is, Getting Well Again, Check that um, out. Positivity and... Um, oh, all of that, yeah, but but it's and and they did research, so it's peer reviewed papers that proves that what they were saying is correct. Oh, great! Yeah, because um, what I try to do with these podcasts and have, when you guys come on as guests is not just talk about you know your clients, your story. You know, everybody's got the the story where you know they have symptoms or you know they get a scan and then they find out they have cancer and then they 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 get their treatment and blah 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 which is fine, you know, we want the audience to connect to you, but what else did you do, right? Yeah. Other than, and, and during your remission time, uh, besides, um, uh, you know, doing the conventional treatment, like I do, like I did Reiki the other day, it was great, and I see you, do you so you're a Reiki instructor, or? I, I, I saw I, a certificate on your Instagram. Yeah, yeah, I, I do Reiki. Um, I received Reiki, and it was the turning point for me. So um, yeah. I, um, when I first got diagnosed, I've got a very strong family history of cancer. So my mum, my maternal grandmother, my paternal grandmother all had breast cancer. My auntie had breast cancer on my mum's side. My mum eventually died with metastatic um, breast cancer that had metastasized to her brain. So she had a brain tumour and sadly she died Following an operation, the chemo that she'd had prior to that meant that her blood didn't clot. So at 72, she'd first had breast cancer in her early 50s. So I'd got a really strong family history of cancer. So when I was diagnosed, my immediate reaction was not about being concerned or fearing the disease, more the treatment. And my reaction was, and I can remember being stood in the kitchen speaking to my partner and saying, I'd rather die. I'd rather die than go through chemo. And again, it was the fact that I would be poisoning my body. Everything I'd done up until then, I'd been reasonably healthy. Yeah, I like to have a drink and, you know, eat crap sometimes. But generally, I was pretty healthy. I was pretty fit. Um, I'd always been a reasonable weight. I'd never been overweight. And so I'd looked after myself. Um, and I just thought, nah, nah, I don't, I don't want chemo. I don't want to poison my body. I'd rather die. And then my neighbour, who'd Ooh. studied Reiki in the 70s in Germany, said to me when we were telling people, because I, I had to go and have a, an op, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to have to tell people because I can't just disappear for however long and then come back. And I was beginning to look pregnant because um, I'd actually got metastatic ovarian cancer, the silent killer. Fantastic, eh? So, um, yeah, I, I, was, I had this conversation over the fence with my neighbour. And uh, she said to me, she said, do you want some Reiki? And I'd sort of dabbled with reflexology and things like that. And I said, I'd love some Reiki. She said, do you want some right now? And I'm like, it's Saturday night, Ulla. She said, and? She said, I'll come round. And I'm like, well, please, yeah. So she came round and we went into my daughter's bedroom and I came out of the room a different person, a totally different person. It was like a light bulb moment and something switched and from being extremely negative and actually wanting to die as opposed to having to poison my body, I just knew I'd be okay. I absolutely knew I'd be okay. And it was just, it was the Reiki. Wow. And yeah, my neighbor, yeah. she was amazing. She's, she did it with me. She did the Reiki with me virtually every day from that time until I went into and had my op. She sent it to the situation. So she sent it to the team that worked on me and during the operation. So, and I don't know whether you know that it can work remotely as well. Yes, I just, you know, I recently uh, recently learned that. I've been reading books and things like that about, you know, the energy. And then, of course, with Joe Dispenza with quantum physics yeah, and yeah. the physics level and, 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 and the research that yeah. they've done on prayer 
yeah. remotely. Meditation too. and hypnosis it's and amazing. yeah. Amazing, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So so um yeah, so then after um I'd had the operation and I came out and she continued to do Reiki with me and heal heal me um after the operation on a physical and um also the mental aspect as well. But she I then decided that, you know, I, I actually need to learn how to do this for myself. And I'd considered doing it before and I'd actually signed up with somebody and, and it, it happened that he got ill so he couldn't do it. So um, that was prior to me even having cancer. So I knew, I just had this innate sense that it was something that was right. So after what had happened, I just knew that I had to learn it for myself. So I... Um, I sourced with the help of all of my neighbour, um, somebody that would be my Reiki master. And I went and I spoke to Anne and I, I knew over the phone that she was the right person to teach me and that she would be my master. Um, and she's absolutely fantastic. So I did my level one in September of 2019. So literally what I had my operation in the June, in the September I was doing the Reiki um, learning and in the November I did my level two. So yeah, so one day I will be a master myself and teach other people wow that's so powerful yeah, that's great it, it, it's just tremendous yeah, I, I, it's tremendous yeah yeah how I, did I, you I feel after yours appointments i felt great yeah. i felt um you know not only did i you know because it's so hard for me i try meditation at home and I, and I still try to do it yeah. but it's really tough like i you know i put the incense on i have to put the music on i have to you know, I have to lay down and rest and then do the deep breathing and really try to get the voices out of my head. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but you know, when I do, uh, when I, I, I did two sessions, one was more shamanism. Yeah, yeah. And then this last time I did more, um, I went to a different healer, did more Reiki, which I really enjoyed that. And I felt like I was into that really deep meditative state mm -hmm. with it. And then I, you know, you, you, wake up and you almost feel your body's lighter yeah. you know yeah. that weighted down yeah. and uh it was just i mean i enjoyed it i gotta yeah. i gotta go back i also do acupuncture oh, well, yeah well and i've I, recently I had acupressure too. not acupuncture but i've recently had acupressure huh. and indian oh, head okay. massage as well so yeah oh, wow. i'll have to look into that what, what's it called indian head massage yeah indian head massage well i'm i'm um i mean we'll probably get onto it and i don't know which way around you want to do it but um after having the Reiki experience, I spoke to uh, my my best friend from school lives in New Zealand, and her mum and other family still live over here. But her mum, when she was, she's I think she's got four children, and she got ill with a, um, I, I think it was a like a a, a ner um, like a motor neuron type illness, um. And her doctor said that she'd actually made herself ill and it would take a long time to get her back into a right state. So when she went home, wow. she actually thought about it and she thought, well, if I've got myself into this state, then I can get myself back out of it. And she, she taught herself hypnosis. So, and she did visualization. And so when she found out about me, she, she, she got in touch and she said, I don't do it anymore on a professional level, but I want to speak to you. So I went and um, I spoke with her and she helped me to visualize me being well and getting better. And also for my partner um, and the hypnosis and how to take yourself to that part and how to actually visualize um, <coughs> what you're going to do and the team of people that you're going to need around you. So we actually visualized me breathing in um because well, I used to do karate years ago so I used to breathe in positive energy and I'd be grounded so my feet would be grounded but I would exhale all the negative energy so I would see it as white positive coming in it would travel around my body so all my body would be filled with the positivity but the exhale breath would get rid of any dark negative things so when I meditate now I sometimes think of that or I think of other colors that represent different things so when I was speaking to my friend's mom, she was, she was talking about breathing in the people that would help me, my team. So my partner with the love. And as a mechanic, he uses tools in his work. So he, he would have tools with him. And he would go in with a team, so my doctors that would know where to take him so that he could do what he needed to do with the help of them to get rid of this cancer. 
Um, so, so he and and he actually. So I told him about this, and and people sometimes think, and he doesn't tell many people. So, and he won't mind me telling you and sharing it with other people because he he's very much aware now of just how powerful it is. So he used to visualize. He'd put his hand on me in bed, and he'd visualize these things. So he's going into my body, but he said it was. He's never played video games in his life, but it just happened that it felt right that he was playing a video game. And in this video game, he was shooting at the cancer rather than using the tools that he's used to use. And he was shooting at the cancer. It was disintegrating. And then this one particular time, and I knew he was, he was, he was feeling all over my body and where the cancer was and, and he couldn't feel it. And I didn't ask him, I didn't say to him, what are you doing? But I just sensed that he couldn't understand why previously he could feel that he'd got a job to do, but now he couldn't. And uh, when we went for the scan, and so this is in, so I first found a lump in the April. In the June, I had my radical hysterectomy and a mentum removed some lymph nodes. Um, they couldn't remove all of the lymph nodes where it had metastasized to my paraortic lymph nodes um, because it was just too close to my duodenum and spleen. So the doctor, she um, arranged for her senior consultant to come and she said it was just, she said it was like glue. They just, they didn't take any more away, but they had to leave some in. Um, so when we went for the, the histology, when it came back, it was a really rare form of squamous cell carcinoma deriving from a dermoid cyst and it was bilateral. So it was on both ovaries. And my oncologist, who was very experienced in her field, had only ever um, treated one other woman in 20 years with that same type of cancer. Wow. So when they decided on a course of treatment and I actually had a letter from them virtually saying that within a year they expected me to be dead um, because of how how it was. But I knew it was going to be okay, but I wanted that letter so that I could make arrangements for my pension and things like that. but quite often when people are given a time scale, they live to that time scale. But I just sure. said, no, yeah, I said, I said, no, 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 I, I want a piece of paper. It doesn't matter what that piece of paper says. It's just going to allow me financially to do things that's going to better my family for when a fat bus comes along and knocks me over because cancer's not taking me. So, so they gave me the piece of paper that allowed me to do the financial things that gave me peace of mind. And going back to where I was um, about the scans and things so that my operation was in the june i started chemo in two weeks after my daughter was 18 so that was august um after i'd had i I think it was two days after my third chemo and i had carboplatin paclitaxel and then i had one lot of avastin or bevacizumab uh, and i went for my scan and it was clear and the wow. oncologist did, didn't know what to do. She, I, th- I think she was just blown away. And my partner, he couldn't believe it and wanted to see the written report. And he kept thinking that it got mixed up with somebody else's. But I changed my diet. I was pretty much vegan. I had stopped having dairy. I was having toothpaste that didn't have fluoride in. All of my products. Your, your skin is your biggest organ of your body. So all of the things that I washed in were natural. Um... I was meditating at a Buddhist um, temple. So I'd go from chemo some days straight to the Buddhist temple because the meditations there were beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So I was doing positive affirmations, which I still do. Um, And the positive affirmations at first was difficult to get my head around because it was talking about being healthy when I knew I was diseased. But my favorite ones are negativity feeds it positivity starves it so anybody that was negative around me oh, i like that yeah anybody negative around me if they were upset i'd say hang no 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 come on you have to be positive because that positivity is what starves it if you're negative it feeds off it and that negativity transfers to me and you can't have that so i've always maintained that i can't be around positive uh, negative people i have to be around positive people um, and the other one is, and I have anchors. So uh, one of my favorite affirmations and every day without fail is uh, thank you, universal life source for my 100% health in my mind, in my body, in my spirit and in my soul. 
And it is such a powerful, powerful statement and affirmation. And I think everybody should have something that's right for them. And what I did was right for me. It's not right for everybody, but it was right for me. Wow. Yeah. I try to do a lot of uh, gratitude yeah. uh, affirmations too, you know, just thanking the mm -hmm. universe. Cause I really do. My wife and I really truly believe what you put out in the universe yeah. comes back to yeah. you. So yeah, this, yeah, yeah. it's great. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I, I do a lot of spiritual things. Um, and again, it's not for everybody, but I have crystals. Um, I met an amazing guy in yes, South America. Um, who's a healer in South America. And this was before I had cancer. And he's, he was fantastic. When he found out that I'd got cancer, he said, send me a picture. And it's quite funny because there was a little bit of, I, I met him and he was doing a ritual on the beach. He speaks no English at all. So Google Translate is fantastic. But it sometimes has its little blips, which is quite amusing. So he was doing this ritual on the beach. And this was the year before. So part of my story is can cunt cancer in a year. Um, so I went to Cancun with work, literally at 10 days notice. Um, so what it wasn't in intended that I was there initially, but things happen for a reason, don't they? Um, and this was, yes, absolutely. And this was, uh, so when you went to Cancun, this was 2017. Uh, how far after 2017? So prior, and you prior got diagnosed to, yeah. in when? And I had cancer. Oh, sorry, 2018. So, yeah, I had cancer 2019. And it was Cancun the year before, 2018. Oh, the year before. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, everything's for a reason, like you said. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, Julian nice was stood on the beach and he'd gone from Chile to Cancun because it was a certain time in the lunar cycle and solar cycle. So, he was stood on the beach and he's got his arms up like this and he's allowing um, the energy and, and he's, he's um, transferring it into his body and then the oceans taking it, the negatives taking it away. So this is what I understand from Google Translate. Uh, but I saw this and I, I, I was just amazed. So I was working at the time because I support a lady who has cerebral palsy. So I support her, but that's usually my work role. Um, but she was going on holiday and the person who was supporting her handed a notice in with 10 days notice. And she was, she was just so devastated that she thought she might not be able to go on holiday. So I said, look, don't worry about it. I used to be a travel agent, so I know how it works. I know we can change this. We can sort it out. Needs be, I can come with you. And passport's out of date. But I can go to Liverpool and we can sort it out. So we sorted it out and I went to Mexico and I met Julian, who's this amazing healer from Mexico. And when I got cancer, he asked me to send a picture of me wearing clear clothes. Now I said to my partner, Gavin, I said, oh my, does he mean he wants a picture of me naked? <laughs> <laughs> so I messaged, I messaged Julian, I said, Julian, I'm just a little bit confused. Can you just please explain it? Yeah. Do you want me in a picture? wearing clothes oh yes 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 uh, uh, clear clothes white clothes <laughs> plain clothes uh, so it was so he yeah. could see my aura oh nice yeah so okay. i took a picture of him wearing a white shirt against a white background so he could see my aura and he told me to put some water by my bed some plain water a glass of water by my bed and i don't know if you've looked at water and the properties or anything to do with that oh, no, yeah. okay well if i can't remember the name of there's a gentleman that's done some really really interesting work if you play classical beautiful music to water and then look at the crystals under a microscope or um i think when you freeze it look at the, look at the crystals under a microscope the patterns are beautiful if you play really horrific horror music or you know just white noise the crystals are just, they look angry, they look evil. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. So the water that he told me to put by my bed, um, it was to purify the air and take away the negativity. So if you do it, you'll notice quite quickly if there's negative energy around, it, it becomes quite gunky and it needs replacing often. Now the water that I put at the side of my bed, and I always have a glass of water at the side of my bed, and you just leave it until it needs changing, is usually clear. 
If I'm a little bit ill or under the weather, it goes gunky quickly. Wow, I gotta try that. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, it's so good. And I, I was just surrounded by love. And I think, you know, my partner used to cook me the most amazing food and he'd make me breakfast, but he'd put little, um, he'd cut the mushrooms into little love hearts. And I was just surrounded by so much love and people did so much for me. It was just wonderful. But it still is wonderful. And I've met, I did a lot of exercise. It's proven if you do oh, really? at least yeah. 30 minutes exercise, three times a week your chances of recurrence are reduced by 50 percent yeah well i'm a big proponent of exercise i have a yeah. i have a garage gym and, and a lot of my podcasts i try to uh you know i've, I've uh interviewed um you know different uh, fitness level people and and things like that and, yeah. and um, i attribute to a lot of uh, yeah. my healing uh to uh to exercise yeah, yeah. absolutely my um I've got a close friend who I'm working with and I'm doing some business development with her. She's got um, a wellness center here and she herself had breast cancer twice um, and another type of cancer. And I don't remember whether it was thyroid. I think it might have been, but she's an amazing individual. It's the RCM wellness center and it's just absolutely fantastic. So she offers oncology therapies, so oncology massage. She's actually an osteomyologist um as well as many other things but we've, we've we're doing charitable work so that we can you know people that are disadvantaged financially so that we can offer various therapies for them so that they can because i had angelic Re uh, reiki at the hospice day service and it was just fantastic because a lot of people who have illnesses not necessarily just cancer but cancer in included financially disadvantaged because they can't work the benefit system's not great I was really fortunate that I got um, an assessment and I got the full allowance from the government to be able uh, so that allowed me to still do the things that I wanted I joined the gym from a referral from my GP um, and I also got a referral to an exercise class that Emma ran which is where I met her and she was did it specifically for people with cancer Oh, that's great. I talk uh, a lot, and, don't uh, I? Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. This is great. This is great. And keep talking because, I mean, this is just, I, this, I love this stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I think the audience just want to hear more and more and more because this is this is what it's about, fighting cancer, you know, doing all but, uh, these Yeah, other I, I think as well the problem, uh, what, I, what I didn't tell you and what I'll probably get on to. So after I got my scan, which was clear in October, um, I continued with the rest of the paclitaxel and carboplatin, and I finished that in the December. The Avastin stroke bevacizumab, I don't know what you call it over there. Um, I was supposed to have 18 cycles of that. I think I had six, um, and I stopped, um, partly because I couldn't understand why I still needed to poison my body. I'd got no evidence of disease. I chose not to have radiotherapy. Oh, so they wanted you to continue. Yeah. They wanted you to continue yeah. the Avastin even though you were yeah, an yeah. AD. Wow. Yeah, Just yeah because, I'm on Avastin too. Yeah, yeah because, because they didn't know what to do because I tipped the textbooks on the heads. So even, even the treatment, when we were looking at treatments, they couldn't say exactly what was right because it's such an unusual cancer. My, I've got a, my sister-in-law's... Um, sister works in America in ICU at one of the hospitals she spoke to three consultants at John Hopkins with my scans and all my information they gave me until Christmas 2019 yeah so so she still asks now is, is Karen is Karen still okay like yeah Karen's still NED yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah they gave me till Christmas and when what was the uh, the date uh, the uh, the year and the month that you were technically NED? Uh, October two thousand and nineteen. First of October two thousand and nineteen. Two thousand nineteen. So yeah, they, so, they wanted you know, me to. to sorry. Oh, sorry. I wanted to ask you the so for the audience for the timeline because when you first got diagnosed, yeah, right, that was when you were very you know negative, and 
um when did you so how soon after that did you like you know do the reiki and then snap out of it and all of a sudden made a turn for uh to live so so i I felt the lump in the april 14th of april 2019 i was just lying in bed and felt the lump in my abdomen um and I left it for a week because I just thought, oh, well, you know, maybe I need to go to the toilet. <laughs> no. Just, you know, things like that. And then I thought, no, it's not. It's, mm, I can move it about, but it's staying in this same area. And I was put on the cancer pathway really quickly. We've got a really good cancer pathway. I think it's quite different from America, but we have, um, I think it's about 63 days a target from initially seeing your GP and being put on the cancer pathway to actually receiving your first treatment or knowing what's going to happen. And then, so, so that was, so I went and I had, so I did CA125 blood test. They did um, ultrasound that showed uh, an eight centimeter, eight centimeter. They thought it was just a dermoid cyst at first on my right ovary. Then they sent me, because of the size, they sent me for an MRI. They saw that um, it had increased to 13 centimetres. I was getting bigger by the day. I looked pregnant. I'd gone from a size wow. 10 pant to a size 18 pant when I went into hospital. So walking was difficult. Uh, wow. Clothes, I had to buy new clothes. And then when I had my um, CT scan, um, it had metasized. And so... They just tried to get me in as quickly as I could. I had the most amazing surgeon, um, Dr. Thangavello. She was just fantastic. So then, I ha- well, I had the Reiki. It must have been about May, May 2019. So before I'd had the op. And it was just an instant. I knew, I just as soon as I'd had that first Reiki, I knew, just knew. That's great. Yeah. Uh, what's the um did they stage it? Yes, stage three, grade uh, three. Stage three. Right there. Yeah, seems like you definitely beat it very fast. I mean, that's you know, with everything else that you were doing, you know, the Reiki and the affirmations, that's wow, yeah. what a great. That's great. Yeah. yeah. The gluten free yeah. for your diet. And uh, for the cel- celiac disease, but what else? Um, so diet know, wise, you tribute. So my diet, um, I've always known um, that meat's not always good for you necessarily, but that's a choice. And my daughter had been vegan for a year anyway, so I'd got a really good understanding of what a, a good vegan diet looks like. Um, I'd actually also done a food prep business um, for a little while. So I just brought all of that knowledge back to the fore and totally changed my diet. And what's really odd, actually, is even before I knew I was ill, my body was telling me to eat mushrooms. Now, mushrooms are really fantastic medicinally. Um, And there's a book called Medicinal Mushrooms. My herbalist, I use a herbalist um, to get my toothpaste and things like that from. Um, And he loaned me this book, which is fantastic. So I had this craving. I'd come home from work and I'd just say, oh, I just fancy mushrooms. So I'd make myself a pan of mushrooms with butter. um, And I just love them. And I I was just like, my body couldn't get enough. So I've learned now to actually listen to my body. And if if I fancy something, then eat it. Um, And that's that thing that with pregnant women that they have cravings and it's because, and I read something the other day and it's about the unborn child helps to, to balance. And and when you need, it's when you, the, the unborn child needs something, that's the craving that the mother then has to then pass it on to the unborn child. Really interesting. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, so when you, like when you're sick or have an illness, your body's like craving yeah, something. Yeah, to, it to knows better, what it needs, right? and I think we've lost that. And I think with modern, and I'm reading a fantastic book at the moment. I'm just looking to see where it's. It's like the side of my bed. A fantastic book at the moment, um, and it talks about how Western society's changed now. So, so we, um, you know, we we've we've developed this tendency to rely on drugs to to treat problems rather than looking at the underlying issue. Yes. 
So, and I, I also strongly believe that my cancer is a result of stress. I think that we put our bodies under so much stress and traumas and things like that, that then actually comes back and it manifests itself in a physical way. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I attribute my, uh, my cancer to stress. Yeah. Oh, man, that's, that sounds like, uh, you know, you got a hand, you must have gotten a handle of your stress. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, your your healing, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's uh, also a reason a, why. So it's also a reason why now I've decided to, to change what it is that I do work wise because you know life's too short and everybody says it, but often people don't do yeah. anything about it. And now it's like I've recognised that work's actually making me feel ill. I come home and I'm tired, so I can't do the things that I want to do that help me to stay well at home. So. Um, I just handed my notice and I don't have a job to go to, but I know it's going to be okay because I trust that I will find something that's right. And you know what, if I have to eat baked beans, so, so be it, I'll eat baked beans. I love baked beans. Yeah, baked beans are good. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Wow. That is, that is good. Um, what's the, um, you know, it's, it's interesting with the meat that you're talking about. Cause in, in here, cause I talked to my brother, he's in Canada and Toronto and um, you know, their meats are different. You know, they're not packed with all these hormones yeah. and antibiotics. Yeah. And in the U S I try to, if I'm going to try not to have too much meat, more fish, but if I have something with meat at home, I'll try to make sure it's uh, like maybe Turkey yeah. and uh, instead of red meat, but make sure it's antibiotic free and hormone free mm. but how how are in your location um how how do they treat the meat there <clears throat> excuse me so we have um it depends on where you buy your meat from you can you can get meat cheaply if you get cheap meat it tends it's, it's the same with everything you get what you pay for um unfortunately oh, sometimes okay. we're restricted financially so Right. Yeah, we can, we can get meat. If, if we have meat, which we still do, we try and buy organically as possible. Um, so we'll have less meat, but better quality. Um, and we, we just, we bulk our meals up. So like, for example, my daughter's coming over and she and her boyfriend um, for Sunday lunch tomorrow. They love meat. So we'll do a roast, but I'll probably have more veg. I'll probably just have a roast veg dinner as opposed to a roast meat dinner. Um but, but we buy, you know, so for example, Wales do some Wales uh, salt marsh lamb. So the, the the lambs that have been feeding on the salt marshes, so they're eating really well. The taste is delicious. Um, so we'd, we'd look at, at, at having, you know, organic meat where it's it's been um, well looked after. It's, you know, the husbandry is really, really good on the farm. Um, and they've had a good life. Wow. 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 That's really but, good. Um, you, know, we, you know, we, we, oh, go ahead. I was, I was just going to say what I cut out very early on and listening to my body was um, dairy. So milk is really, really bad oh, for yeah. you. Milk, cow's milk. I so know. I have oat milk now and they do a fantastic barista oat milk, which in coffee and tea is just so creamy and delicious. What kind of milk did you say it was? I'll get you the, shall I get you the carton and show you? Sure, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. It's called Barista Oatly. It's because we do almond, we do almond milk. Yeah, here, almond milk is low in calories, options. isn't it? But oat milk is is delicious. Well, just one minute. Oh, oh, oat, okay, oat milk. Yeah, we do have oat milk here. Maybe I should try to switch to that more than I couldn't almond hear milk. you. Sorry. Oh no, that's okay. Yeah, we do have oat milk here. Um, it hasn't been around, I don't think, that long. But yeah, some I've of seen it, it. And uh, just be careful, though. Some of it doesn't go well if you like hot drinks. Um, so the barista versions are fantastic. So they don't split. Barista version. Yeah, but this is the toothpaste that I use as well, and it's amazing. So it's, there's no fluoride in it. Oh, okay. Okay. And For it, those just listening on and now watching the video. Because uh, we're on audio podcasts okay. too, like Google and Apple. Yeah. It's Aloe, uh, A L O E, and then Dent, D E N T. And that's fluoride free. Right? Yeah, it tastes great. There's no aftertaste. You know, sometimes you brush your teeth and you have that horrible aftertaste. Yeah. yeah. None of that. 
it's 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 great absolutely great. and I went to the dentist recently and I don't know about over there but over here they're like they really really sort of try and enforce that you must use a toothpaste that's got fluoride in because it's the best thing ever but, um, yeah, they push that here. Yeah, too. yeah. So I went to the dentist, and it's two years that I've been using this since I got cancer. And I always used to have to have my teeth cleaned. And uh, she said, There's absolutely nothing that we can do for you to make your teeth any better. Carry on doing what you're doing. Uh, so you'd probably be quite surprised to know that I'm using a toothpaste that's not got fluoride in. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. They probably don't want to hear that. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely not. That you know, it, it pays for them to have for people to have bad teeth, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yep, that's right. Gosh, um, yeah, and you know, besides the uh, the meat, the my wife and I talk about that too. It's like because we try to do because you know the pesticides they use here, mm-hmm. and the the things that they feed into the ground, uh. C- kills off all the minerals you know not just the vitamins but the minerals so they gotta put back all the nitrogen and stuff so we yeah. gotta buy organic you've just stuff reminded me that's the other thing place. i used to get an organic box delivered every week yeah you just reminded me yeah but i stopped that so some of the okay. things i have to keep sort of pinching myself because you sort of sometimes revert to type so that's one of the things that i said to my partner i said we'll have to reintroduce that because the food tastes amazing organic food is fantastic so sometimes oh, now yeah. when i go to the supermarket again it's that affordability if it's on a special offer if it's a good price i will buy it but the box is a really good value because they come from a local farm as well so they're grown locally you're reducing your carbon footprint all of the good things but in one and it's delivered yeah we have to we've talked about that because they do have uh programs from local farmers mm. where they deliver a uh you know like you said something like a box yeah. and they you know and it's like weekly or bi week. Yeah. I think it's weekly, and you just kind of like a bunch of stuff. And, yeah, yeah. You know, we'll go to the market. It's whatever but, seasonal and yeah. things. I think what happened here yeah. was with COVID, they had an issue with um, some of the produce, which they can't grow locally, obviously, for our climate. Um, they were having problems. So the quality, because of the um, holdups, wasn't so good. So we were getting tomatoes that were a bit past it. And yeah, you can put them into roasting and stews and things but it's not quite the same if you're wanting a salad so so yes yeah, so i think that's mm-hmm. part of the reason why we stopped it but we'll look at introducing that again wow yeah and what kind of mushrooms do you uh, eat over there oh, um, um, well we i've just made a, a vegan pie actually it's leek and mushroom um puff pastry pie um but the mushrooms Ooh. i've used in that we've used woodland mushrooms um, I've used chestnut mushrooms huh. and button mushrooms. I take a, um, a with the mycelial mycelium network. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with the mushrooms that Stamets does. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of uh, Stamets, but uh, yeah. So I do uh, turkey tail right. supplement mushrooms and um, reishi reishi uh, mushrooms Superb. through supplements. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, they they are just amazing. Yeah. One of the um, Sorry, one of the things that I did recently um, is something called forest bathing. And I don't know if you have it over there, but in Japan, that's where it originates from. They, um, oh. Their equivalent of the health service that we have, people are offered forest bathing as a... Um, as, as like a treatment, as a health benefit for things like depression, for helping your mood and for anxiety and just for remaining calm. And in terms of meditating, it's absolutely superb. It's a, it was a two-hour session walking in ancient woodlands because, you know, they all have networks. So the trees have communication networks and things. Oh, wow. So it's... um. How do you, so yeah, go into that. Like, so how do you um, get connected um, to that forest bathing? So you're, you're walking two hours in nature, in, in the woods. Mm-hmm. And is it a particular spot that has to have? 
you know, as, as, any wood. as long as it's an ancient woodland, because they've developed those ancient. communication pathways, so the newer woodlands, they haven't got that same um, connection because they have all the different, um, I, I don't know the right word for it, but micro, all the different diversity. So things like the fungi that... Um, they, they grow and they help the other things that are growing. You know, it's all it's all grown organically together, and all the years and years and years and you know thousands of years of ancient trees that are there, and their sort of sibling trees. Those networks help with your meditation, with your calming, and that the health benefits was absolutely the. I don't think I've actually had a meditation where I've felt so good in such a short space of time. It's guided. Wow. So somebody has to be trained to do it and they talk you through and you do it in small groups and for the most part you're quiet and then you have times when you talk about what you see, what you feel, what you touch, what you smell and it's just amazing. And then you lie down and when you lie down and meditate at the end under the canopy, you just feel at one with the forest. It's unbelievable. Oh, well, I'm going to have to uh, yeah, you know, do. Google that and see if there's anything around yeah. within driving distance, ancient woodlands, wow, mm -hmm. and guided. guided well, I'm to, yeah. I've got one literally within a 10-minute uh, walk of where I live in ancient forest. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's wow. abs that's very lucky. I'm so lucky, so lucky, yeah. And we've only got about 2% of ancient woodland in the UK. In Japan, I think they've got 70-something percent. It's huge. Wow, yeah. Wow. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, uh, speaking of that nature, my, my wife and I, once in a while, we'll ground ourselves with the earth. Yeah. You know, we'll go out there in the, in the yard and we'll take our shoes off yeah. and socks off and just get those ions from the earth, yeah. you know, and our ions and just flow. Fantastic. Yeah. Because it's, it's that, I mean, when I had to tell my daughter um, before she was 18 that I'd got cancer, I went outside and we've got um, a mountain ash in our back garden and I went out and I just felt drawn and I touched the trunk and I just drew strength from it um because I knew it's going to be a really really difficult conversation and I just took deep breaths and took strength from it and then every time I sort of felt a little bit like I needed something I'd go and stand with it and the birds would be above and it was just amazing just amazing yeah wow yeah yeah I try to walk in the um Speaking of birds, I tried to. I for, I was reading a book and I forgot which book it was, but there was a reason why birds um, uh, go out and uh, you know sing hmm. first thing in the morning, right before sunrise. Yeah, yeah. You know, it has to do with the photosynthesis, right, and the trees and the oxygen rich. Wow. And so I'll try to I'll try to go out there and do a walk right before sunrise too, and just try to deep breathe during my yeah. walk. I'll try to walk near trees and just Fantastic. take all that. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. What was, um, you know, the, uh, you know, I want to ask as far as your support. So you have one, how many kids do you have? Just one. She's just enough. one daughter, right? The one daughter. <laughs> yes, she's enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's and your partner. Spirited. So what? <laughs> The, the you know the the lifestyle changes right and, and the miraculous lifestyle changes that and that you know you were able to radically uh, put yourself in remission what uh how did how does that affect your partner now for his life and your daughter's life like did they change um you know any lifestyle changes in their life seeing what you've done um, i think for my daughter she's very much live life for now because it's 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 not a given so I mean she's an only child oh, and some, I think sometimes only children can be spoiled so me and um, Alex's dad were divorced so it's we, 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 we speak, probably get on better now than we ever did you know we don't speak often but it's it's okay um but my part, you know, so Alex, oh, blimey, she's she's absolutely, she's doing amazing. I think at the time it was really hard and she didn't like to speak. But now she's got her own place. She's just got her own house with a with a, a boyfriend. She's 20 years old. She's got a fantastic job. She's very career minded. But she's not just 
done that. She's sensible. She goes on holiday. She likes to go out on a weekend. She sees her friends. She just lives her life and she loves it. So oh, that's, that's, I'm that's really so proud of her. Yeah. Really proud of her. Um, and Gavin, just bless. He's just so, he's just so wonderful. Really wonderful. And, you know, he, he's got a, he's a mechanic. Um, and he's got a garage and I call it his charity garage because bless he only, he only ever pays his rent. He never brings any money home. Um, because he just, he's just a lovely guy. He just likes helping people like I do, you know? So, and yeah, he, he was more than happy to do whatever it took. And yeah, I, I could see the love, you know, when he was just looking, bless he was having to put my horrible, very unsexy green surgical stockings on for however long after I came out of hospital whatever it did, whatever time of day, you know, it didn't matter. He slept on the floor because he was scared to sleep at the side of me because of my scar. And he, he yeah. And, you know, eating whatever I ate because if, if, if it was going to make me better, he absolutely didn't mind, you know, he, he would do anything. He's just amazing. Yeah. And we did, we did like wow, charity yeah. things after as well, you know, so we'd walk to the three peaks, which is it's like 20, how far is it? About 26 mile, but the three um, like largest peaks in Yorkshire Dales. So we did that in, um, well, I a- attempted to do it, but it was, there were three women that I'd not trained hard enough in hindsight because we did that in March 2020. Yeah, March 2020. So I'd not trained hard enough. Uh, it was March, so we didn't have enough daylight hours. It was snow on the top of one of them. But the rest of the party carried on and did it. So we raised a lot of money. We've had gin um, gin and cake events because drinking a lot of gin helped me a lot. I didn't mention that bit, but yeah, I'd go from chemo as well some mornings and go around to my sister-in-law's and say, pour me a gin. And she'd go, no way. Oh, wow. She'd go, no way, it's 11 o'clock at morning. I'd say, Selena, I've just poisoned my body. That's just diluting it. Um, but yeah, just sometimes you need a blowout. Huh. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, you, can, you can't be good all of the time. And yeah, you know, like, yeah, you just put your body through so much. And I used to have a ritual actually when I was going to chemo. And the ritual was I would only, my body would only use whatever poison it needed and what poison it didn't need, I would get rid of as quickly as I could. So I'd have a bathing ritual before I went and did my chemo. So, and the colors were important to me. So, and the smells of whatever products. So, I'd use natural products and I'd use purple and green for cleansing and healing. And I'd tell myself as I was showering, you're going to be poisoning your body, but you're only taking what you need. You're going to get rid of the rest. And I'd drink a lot and I'd breathe in positive and all of the poison, I'd exhale. And even whilst I was actually having it, I would try and meditate that. Only use what you need and get rid of what you don't and exercise in as soon as I could after to help get rid of it. Wow, that's so powerful. Yeah, that's such a good point. You know, just communicating with the cancer in your body yeah. and just saying, you yeah, know, just use what you need. And, I, o- I also you know, used, and I always- to, yeah, I used to use a charcoal mask sometimes as well. And the darkness to me, once I'd oh. cleanse my face with the darkness, would represent the cancer going and I'd see it disintegrating you know in the water in the bath and I would visualize that that was the cancer breaking down and going out into the universe not hurting anybody else but just going out there yeah yeah wow yeah Yeah. absolutely I sound like a crackpot to some people but it's just what worked for me (laughs) and I appreciate everybody's (laughs) different and you know you have to do what's right for you and find what's right for you and listen to your body and if something doesn't feel right then it probably isn't that's right. That's right. Yeah. I, you know, I, you know, I try to look at the cancer as not, I try not to be hate, have hateful feelings hmm. for it because yeah. I know it's like just more negative energy. Yeah. You know, I just try to say, you know, okay, come on, it's time for you to go now. Yeah. You yeah. Know, it's, yeah, yeah. It's been okay. It's yeah. been okay ride, yeah. but it's time yeah, for yeah, you to go. Yeah. We're, we're, we're done now. I've, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I totally get that. And I think as well, you know, if you treat your body with love and talk to your body with love and, it's all, and that's sort of like going back to that water thing. We're made up of majority of our body is water. So if you, I can't think, but if you look at um, 
water crystals and playing music it is just amazing and again if you think of how much water we're made of is it 98 percent water we are yeah, it's pretty high up yeah. there, yeah. So it, you can even you can even do the experiment yourself. So put two glasses of water on a windowsill. Yeah. So you run the tap, literally, just two two glasses. One of them, you actually put a note on it saying, you are the most beautiful thing in this room. And to the other one saying, you're disgusting, you're disgraceful, you're ugly. And then you talk to the one that you've put the lovely post-it note on, and you say, oh, with love. You know, like people talk to plants with love. Yeah, my yeah. wife talks to yeah. her. She's a big plant person. We exactly. Yep. So you, you do this with water and you just see the difference and then send me a picture after you've done it for a bit. So you wow. say to the yeah, other I'm one, gonna, I'm, I'm you're ugly, that. you, and look at you, you're horrible, and, and then just see the difference. Yeah, I mean, if you just go down into the fundamental level of, like, even deeper into the water, the uh, crystals and go into like the atoms and then what are at you know and then it's all energy yeah. you know we're yeah we're, we're energy like, even yeah. though we're matter we're all energy the water's energy yeah. so i truly believe that 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 can you know cause all that yeah transference you know yeah. absolutely oh, that's great um any uh any other things you attribute to your um uh, you know, your, your positivity or your, your health, your remission, your fight for the cancer uh, that you uh, that you want to, you know, tell other uh, cancer think one, fighters out there that are listening? Yeah, I think one of the things um, my, my mom always used to say, because obviously she had um, her own cancer journey. And I always remember her saying, there's always always somebody worse off than you. I, I always say that to myself. Yes, I try. You know, because I, I feel... I feel I feel like I've been going through a really tough mental time yeah. lately the last couple of months. And I've been trying to get out of this pit mm -hmm. of like this negative or dark energy. And, yeah. I, you know, and I try to always tell myself, you know, there's always somebody yeah. that's going through more, yeah. worse than me. So, yeah, th there yeah. is. And sometimes it doesn't always help because sometimes and yeah. And mm -hmm. I think as well, acknowledging that, you know what, I'm having a pretty shit day. So I'm having a pretty shit day. So if I want to lie in bed just for today, I'm just going to lie in bed for today. Tomorrow's different. There's always tomorrow. And tomorrow I'm going to do X, Y, Z. And I also think um, just it's really, really important to do what's right for you. And sometimes you have to be a little bit selfish. Sometimes, and I'm not saying you know hurt anybody's feelings, or sometimes you might have to hurt somebody's feelings if you do it in a nice way. And as long as you think, actually, what do I want? And I saw a psychologist because I went through a spell where I was a little bit paranoid about recurrence because I thought it's too good to be true. This it's too good to be true. Oh yeah, my toes itching. That's a sign that my cancer's coming back. Do you know? And and then it, I actually realized, and I think as well because of lockdown, as I was told to self-isolate for six months, I was supposed to stay in the house on my own, you know, not see anybody for six months other than my partner. And it was like, that goes against everything. So, of course, my mental health suffered. And it's total opposite of what you should do. So if something doesn't feel right, question it. Um, and I actually questioned my medical team on more than one occasion. I said, actually, no. So they told me to take blood pressure tablets I said, my blood pressure's up when I come and see you it's absolutely fine all of the other time so I went to my GP and said can you just double check that my blood pressure's all right I've got a blood pressure machine at home so I know it is she checked it she checked my machine was calibrated and she said there's nothing wrong with your blood pressure I said I know that but my consultant wants me to take higher blood pressure tablets Oh, jeez. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, so, and the other thing is my friend in New Zealand, she, this is uh, my friend whose mom did the hypnotherapy with me. She said oh, okay. um, she, she'd got a liver issue. So, and I must tell you before we go, I must tell you about liver transplant. So please remind me if I forget. But so she told oh, me, okay, yeah. um, she told me that, she was on, I think, seven different meds. She said, and I feel just wow. crap. Yeah, she said, I feel just crap. She said, because every time I go and I tell them that I feel this way, they give me another tablet. She said, so enough's enough. I'm going to come oh. off them. I said, are you sure you're all right with that? She said, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it controlled. So she started juicing. So I, I did juicing. I didn't tell you that either. I started juicing. 
but I made one one day and it wasn't for me um so I thought no, okay no my body knows I was rejecting it and if I'm rejecting it it's not good my body's got everything it needs whereas my friend in New Zealand she juiced and she's now off every single tablet and she feels amazing her bloods are fantastic wow. and she's not told a doctor so a doctor a doctor still thinks that she's taken all these tablets but her bloods are fantastic and she's got that clarity back oh wow yeah um, oh, that's so good. But I did also try CBD. Okay. Yeah. Um, and again, that wasn't for me. Now, I do know somebody who has had three different cancers, and he was told um, on the third one, actually, I think he's on his fourth now, on the third one, he, uh, he sat off with bowel cancer. Uh, the third time he had um, an issue, they told him that they he had to have chemo and he said no I'm not having chemo and he went down the CBD route and he went for a scan and his tumour had reduced and they said to him I don't know what it is that you're doing I don't care what you're doing but if you carry on then you're going to be fine and he's been fine so I, I know and I'm not saying that it's right again for everybody it wasn't right for me um because I got some from my daughter's I don't know where this is going, but anyway, it came, it came from um, a source that was pure. But I've never done anything like that before. And it just really freaked me out because I was just, ooh, I was just a mess. I was out of control for the evening, night, and I took a quarter of what was advised. Um, but I do know that it, it works and I know from first hand somebody's first hand experience that it's legitimate. But I think that the drug companies have got too much to lose from a product yeah, where they don't profit from. Yeah, if they can't get a patent on it, they're not gonna bother yeah. doing the research or doing any of that. I take um uh well here we have in New York State we have some states are legal, the THC, the medical marijuana. But the um, I had to go through palliative care, get my medical honor card for my state of New York, and uh, so I do I do THC CBD combo yeah. um, to try to help my uh, you know anxiety, sleep, stomach, um, upsetness, things like that. It seems to you know help me because uh, I'm very sensitive to prescription meds, so I try to do more yeah. of the natural stuff there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the, did you find that the acupuncture worked? Yes, oh yes, uh, especially with, uh, you know, my the acupuncturist focuses on bowel movements and because he says, you know, that's that's so important for the body, yeah. all right, because it just detoxes and just gets everything. So he focuses on that. He focuses on uh, on uh, the, uh, the liver uh, detox, and then we work on, you know, whatever we want to work on that week anxiety or sleep and like i said you know after he puts the needles in and you know you're i'm laying there for like half an hour and just getting that meditative state is just so powerful yeah you know do so you, much easier for me to do that yeah do you do yoga steve no i mean my wife used to do yoga we've talked about it um Geez, I, you know, I do more, just more, you know, lift, lifting, conditioning. I do a lot of walking, but you know, we probably should do more. Uh, tai Chi and yoga. More, we, we tried a couple of Tai Chi videos and it's just one of those things where we have to do it again and yeah. stay consistent. Cause it's something like, you know, you, you do, you do something for a couple of times yeah. and it doesn't become a habit. Yeah, so yeah. we have to like, gotta, we got to stick with it. But yeah. yeah, I mean, we swear by Tai Chi, you know, other people do and, we're like, oh, it's probably good if we do it. So. Yeah, fantastic. But yeah, and so the um. Oh no, so I, I was going to ask about the liver, the liver. Ah, transplant. right. So, so I, yes. So so my yeah, friend. Because, uh, oh yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah, my yeah. friend in in New Zealand then. So and and her mum. So the whole family have this hereditary liver issue. And um, I'm just trying to think of easiest way to say. So Pam is my friend's mum. Jackie is 
Justine's sister, Pam's daughter, her son, Connor, um, has this hereditary liver problem that was so bad he needed a liver transplant. Okay, so this liver trans nobody in the family were suitable donors because you can have part liver transplant, can't you? So you can do it from a live donor because it regenerates. Nobody, yes. in, nobody in the family tested um, as a match. So Connor was getting to the point where he was going towards potentially palliative care and to the point where he wouldn't be able to have a liver if he went on to that. And they'd also found a tumour. They didn't know whether it was benign or malignant on his liver as well. So they were getting really quite desperate. So his sister put a plea out on Facebook and somebody came forward, um, a young man who was a primary school teacher, and he said, he came forward and she said, yeah, that's a good idea. He was a good match. So he went through all the psychological tests and he came out okay on those. So on the day that I got my result, the 1st of October, so so we're quite spiritual. So Justine does the angel cards. I do the angel cards as well. Justine had done an angel card for Connor and it had come out with Miracle. And she put it to one side. She told me, and she said, I've got this card for Connor. I know it's going to be all right. I knew I'd got this sense that it was going to be all right. Um, on, so on the day where I got my all clear scan, so 1st of October 2019, Connor went in for his liver transplant and Jack, the donor. So that's when they actually had to just check that the um, mass um, that Connor had wasn't malignant. So it was benign. So it all went ahead. I got my scan results and I came out um messaged Jackie. Connor came round from his op. She told him about my news. He was thrilled. He said it had made his day. It's all still groggy and everything. Operation liver transplant went well. Um so totally bizarre. And they've recently been on TV, national TV here in the UK. Um, and they're such a wonderful family, full of love, surrounded oh, wow. by love and amazing. And, and yeah, and it just shows that, so, you know, there are amazing people out there that are just. Yeah, that's an amazing story. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because they, you know, they, they recommended uh, that for me, you know, having a, a liver transplant because of all the tumors. My liver was completely covered in tumors from the colon cancer mess. And, uh, but no, I'm okay. Now, the liver is still showing that it's all dead, the uh, liver tumors, even though right. there's a lot of them, but it's all scar tissued up. And so I, I didn't have to go that route of the uh, liver transplant. But Fantastic. I've got a friend of mine I did a podcast with in Toronto, Marvin, and he, um, you know, he's colon cancer with liver mets and he's, um, tried to get on the uh, the list for a liver transplant. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know how hard it is on, in Canada, but I guess it's pretty tough because they, you know, you can't get on it now. You got denied. But maybe he just needs to, you know, like this, uh, you know, reach out. I'd um, say never give up because that's literally from a Facebook plea. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That and is people just, yeah, sharing, asking to, people to share. So people shared yeah. it. And then, you know, Jack came forward. Um, and they're both absolutely, they're just so fantastic. I mean, Connor had lost all of his hair. Um, he looked dreadfully ill. He was yellow. Um, and we were having competitions about whose hair would grow back the quickest, you know, because I, I lost all my hair because of the chemo and everything. So, so, and now to see how he's just flourishing, he's a, and it turns out that they both actually did the same degree at the same uni, just a year apart. So they both did biomedical science. Um, and one works wow. now in a lab, the other one teaches science at school. But, but yeah, it's just amazing. And it just... There's just so many wonderful people out there that just want to help each other. And so, yeah, if your friend in Canada is still wanting one, just tell him to think about a different way, you know, uh, reach out on social media. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even think about a partial because you're right, yeah. it does regenerate. Yeah. 
So it just needs a partial uh, yeah. partial transplant. Wow. It depends yeah, as well on the easy. area, I think, because it's the area that you'll need it. Um, and so there's all sorts of, sure. of things biologically that need to be taken into consideration. But yeah, just just get him to get 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 something out there. Just different opinions because it's uh, you know, everybody's got a little bit different. Uh, yeah you know, perspective on, oh, yeah. what about, you know, there's this treatment, there's so much treatments out there. Do you have, so um, radio, do you have, um, proton therapy? Because that's one of the options that I asked about, but they've only got three places in the UK that do proton beam therapy. Oh, well, uh, I've actually looked into, you know, I'm not sure if it's, uh, not sure if it's proton. I think it is proton. There, there are some wellness centers. I've looked into one locally that does, um, like light therapy they do red light therapy yeah i've I heard about red light therapy, therapy yeah i think they do a proton therapy too they proton also do the, beam um, therapy but have a have a look yeah. at that Pro, but sound healing i forgot to mention about sound healing oh, I'm just, yeah. i'm just currently doing a um it's called a a, 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 a oh, i want to say psychiatry <laughs> It's a psychic development course, but Jonathan, who's running it, he's a sound healer. But when I was doing the acupressure, um, Dr. Industry, she does yoga as well. She's from India and she does chanting at the end, but it's more humming. And it's amazing because obviously it's the resonance in your body um, that's healing and it's fantastic. Yes, yes. Uh, from. You know, I've, I've heard of that, uh, you know, I mean, it's just amazing with even, you, even when you talk about the chakras, right, the seven main ones, and yeah. you've got, you've got the colors, the seven yeah. colors, and then you've got the, the sound, the seven notes, the seven sounds yeah. and, and, and everything else. And, and uh, you know, they also do PEMF, which is like electromagnetic. Electromagnetic therapy. fields. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um and then the hyper they got a, a hyperbaric oxygen chamber yeah um, that's supposed too. to be fantastic that's what they use with athletes isn't it when they need to recover um quickly yeah, yeah. but all this is so expensive though yeah <laughs> it's yeah not that's it. if money's no object yeah. it's okay oh you need a good sponsor right. <laughs> right yeah yeah so you know we do what we can you know yeah you know but, but the um, sound stuff yes. Um, and the rare kit, it's just all free and it's it's just wonderful. And I can send you some I can send you some Reiki. Sure, absolutely. Just send me your um your full name and I'll put you in the book at the centre and then it won't be just me, it'll be everybody that does Reiki at the centre. We'll get you in there. Oh wow. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. And you do you you just need to know that there there's good intent. That's right. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, it's, it's, it's great having these connections, you know, before, uh, you know, cause we, we wouldn't have had this connection without the, you know, the adversities, but I think, I just think that that's, you know, that's the purpose of life to have yeah. these connections with people you don't know and to share stories and yeah. to be positive. Knowledge, you know, knowledge is power, isn't it? And yeah. Yeah, and um, you know, Julian in in Chile, he did Reiki for me from Chile. You know, so for for him to be able to to do that, and but yeah, it's it's fantastic. So do you do you have um, like do, uh, are there any sort of lasting side effects like neuropathy? So I've got a bit of neuropathy in oh, yeah. to my fingers and my toes. Yeah, so the finger, you know, believe it or not, the the fingertips I would say are getting better and better. Uh, it was. Um, just a little bit on the tips. Uh, but when I was on Exaloplatin, it was really bad mm -hmm. to the point where my upper lip and my nose yeah, yeah. was starting to feel numb. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. have a lot of problems with my neuropathy in my feet. Still. Yeah, it's the balance so, and things like that, isn't it? Well, not yet. Uh, thank, thankfully, you know, I could still walk. I, I Well, my wife says I walk differently now, and it's probably because of the neuropathy, but yeah, my toes very numb, mm. especially at night. And when it's wear, cold, um, yeah. I wear, when it's cold, yeah. and now it's cold, you know, here. So I got to wear fleece hunting socks. Yeah. And uh, but I've done um, a moxa root, I uh, or a moxa uh, a stick, and uh, I I burn that, and they say the and it's like an Eastern medicine thing. Oh. So they say burning moxa uh, 
it has that transdermal effect through the skin. You know, it's like an herb where you take the herb internally, but this works through the skin, the heat of the moxa stick. And I'll so have to make I a note to, of that. I, yeah, M O X A, and I and it's uh it's mug mug root mug root mug root mug root. Well, we That's have an Asian um, supermarket, so I'll have a look. Yeah, I get it on Amazon, but. Uh, um, mm. Yeah, so that's supposed to help. And then, of course, you know, I do the heat here to re to uh, to help with the chi. That's yeah. supposed to help you. You know, your uh, what is it, solar plexus here? It is solar plexus. I yeah. Remember. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, so that's good. And then I smudge. You know, we have lavender. I do uh, um, dragon's blood too, and uh, um, yeah. So yeah, I do all the crystals. So do you, yeah. are you still working, or you're not able to work? No, I, you know, I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a registered nurse, so I've been a nurse for over 24 years. Wow. But, you know, when I got sick, it was, you know, I could not. So now I'm just on disability. So now yeah. I'm not working, especially with everything going on with the surgeries and the procedures. Yeah, yeah. And chemo. You, 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 yeah, you so just no. can't. No, no. And it's good, though, because I think if I did go back to work, the stress, yeah. you know, with the healthcare field right now, it's just awful. But, uh, as you know, that stress is not good for my cancer healing, no. so I'm better off not working. Yeah, yeah. But it's nice that you've got a focus. Yeah. So is, is this, this, is, this, this is your focus? This is it, yeah. 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 I, I just recently put out the link that anybody that want to share your story, and I'm, I'm so glad you reached out. because. Well, I mean, you know, I don't know if you'd be interested great. or not, um, but uh, Emma at the Wellness Centre, as I say, she's had two different cancers. And she's got a fantastic story. If you wanted oh, yes, me to yes. connect you, um, I think she'd be fab because she's got a, re you know, she's she's just and she's fant She's got a radio show as well. Oh, she, Absolutely, she, ma no, she that's, manages. That's... Yeah, she manages True Radio, so she does. Um, she's got a couple of sessions on there, um, but she okay. she owns the wellness centre. Um, but she's amazing. Yeah, because I think I've got a few followers from the UK and. And I've actually, um, I'm on this Clubhouse app, and uh, we we meet every week, and um, with uh, colon survivors and or fighting colon cancer. This is specific, but then there's another one that's the cancer survivors. That's any yeah, yeah. cancer, and this Clubhouse is um, really just it's audio, so it's almost like Zoom but without the video. Yeah, yeah. And it's great, and there's a couple of um, um, regulars on there. That's uh, that's. Uh, that I know um, that I've talked to that's from the UK, but that's cool that uh, the wellness yes. center I'll put up in the link. And, and the, um, Emma's dad has yeah. also just been diagnosed with colon cancer. Oh, wow. But I think okay. he's on his fourth cancer of different types. Um, but I'm starting a peer support wow. group for women with ovarian cancer um, with the help of Tag Ovarian Cancer, which is a national charity here. So I've done photos for them. So I've, they've got stock images of me um, for their um, leaflets and PR stuff. And also Macmillan. We have Macmillan nurses that are really huge in the UK. So they do work for anybody of, with any type of cancer. So throughout the hospitals, as well as independently, and they're supporting me with the group too. Um, it'll be hosted at the Wellness Centre, um, but a lot of women who have ovarian cancer also have colon cancer, you know, sec is it, when it metastasizes. Oh. oh, wow, I didn't know that. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so there might be lots of opportunity um, for you to connect with um, a lot of people in that respect as well. Yeah, and, and and of course, you know, in turn, when they listen, you know, if it'll help them, that's yeah, you know, that's what it's about. That's what I'm trying to do is help. You know, so yeah, no, absolutely, that's yeah. no, fantastic. Yeah, and then of course, you know, any any books that you recommend, like I just oh, finished I was... uh, "Letting Go" by David Hawkins, a really good book. Right. A couple of books by Joe Dispenza. Um, oh, the Four Agreements. Four. Um, that was he. Uh, yeah, the four agreements. That's a great four agreements. Too. Yeah, and letting go by Dr. David Hawkins. Um, that's a. I put a. I'm gonna put that on my Instagram, but I put that on my story on my Instagram. Oh, I, I but think they only, actually, it only stays yeah. 24 hours. Yeah, on my recommended on, um, book reads. 
on my Instagram, I've put, um, I think I've put the book that I'm currently reading, which is fantastic. Um, let me just okay. find it for you. Like I said, there's certain things I don't remember. Some yeah, getting are... well again, right? I got that one written yeah, down. Yeah, getting well again. That's the and one that was wrote originally in the 70s. So did you do a lot of Instagram and stuff before then? Or? On my other page, I do a, um, I, my other page is Iron Junkies Gym. I am I Junkies Gym. Uh, I'll have to have a look. Is uh, it iron, so, yeah. Is it linked in with so the one? Um. I think it is on Linktree on, on my bio on the link in the bio, but Iron Junkies Gym. And then, so what I do is I, cause I've been lifting in my garage gym and I've been using that. And then, so now I've been trying to inspire others. That. Okay. Oh, head first. Okay. And that's about positive mindset. And that is, um, it's psychiatrist Alistair Sant's house. You're probably not going to have time to read all these things. I do a lot of um, audibles, and, oh, yeah, um, yeah. and we take the train every time I have. We have to go to um, New York. Uh, my wife and I take the train, which is about a seven-hour ride, um, and so we had to go pretty frequently. But now it's going to go back to I think every two months. I don't have to yeah, go yeah. to New York, but I do have to go to another city um, for the for the chemo and the pump flush. Long story. There's nobody locally that'll do it. So that's about an hour and a half ride. So, and then I do a lot of walking. So I listen to uh, mm. books um, while walking. Yeah, I enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. if uh, we've got a nice day outside, I might go go and have a little walk into the ancient forest. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> it was rain, raining here, so I had to walk on the track. Did three miles this morning. Sometimes gotta, it's really lovely to, to even walking. be out in the rain. Yeah, yeah. The other day, as long as it's not like raining, like uh, like really like a lot you know i'll just wear my raincoat yeah 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 if you've got if you've got the clothes it doesn't matter does it yeah so we've got um we just gotta watch the cold yeah 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 yeah, i don't like the cold we've um we bought a camper van this year in fact it's the second camper van and we just love going off um and and just going to different places and meeting different people and gavin said to me you talk to everybody and i know i know but i like it (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that's, you know, who would love to hear your story is, um, so the, you have to, um, check out, uh, Kelly Turner's page, radical remission, right? You go on Instagram and she is a, and I, those are my two top books. And every, there's a lot of cancer, uh, patients that have read this book and they've recommended it to me. It took me a while to like actually get into it and read it because I was, you know, focusing on uh, yeah. side effects and things like that. And in the beginning, I didn't want to read anything. Yeah, yeah. But, oh, I'm so glad I did because, it, you know, she tells stories uh, and she does research on stories of radical remissions like yourself. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what's missing. Um, People don't write it up. Yeah. They, and, they, they, you know, they don't, the doctors, you know, they yeah, don't, they don't, they don't write it up. They only write they up about the know. deaths and that's what she says. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so she's yeah. trying to put this out there. She's written yeah. two books and uh she's and what got a she movie called that's again, sorry. Come out. Radical it's called Radical Remissions and then Radical Hope is her sequel. And, and it's what's her Kelly, name, sorry? Kelly. Kelly Turner, T U R N E R. Yeah. Got it. And then PhD. She's a PhD, but she yeah. is um, Yeah, I'll um I'll have a look on Instagram book. and I'll just say that I've had a chat with you. Send her a message. But I, it's, it's I want, I want to be out there. I actually have a board and it's 10 factors on, on her book. Oh. And only like, I think only three of them is nothing to do with the mind. So it's diet, diet is one of them, herbs, supplements, and then exercise. But the other seven are like releasing suppressed emotions, increasing yeah. positive emotions, yeah. empowering yourself, yeah. spiritual connection, following intuition, yeah. increasing social support, and a strong reason for living. Yeah, and so absolutely. she takes these radical remissions, people that mm. that have taken some of these factors mm. that yeah. put themselves in remission yeah. like you have, yeah. 
And so it's amazing. People but need it, to hear more stories like it, yours. Again, you know, like you said there about like social uh, aspects. So there were things in my life that were missing. So family that are now back in, in the circle of my, and it's an actual core. So th- I do so much and we meet for meals and they come here and all of that had been lost prior to this. It's like a way of cancer bringing it all back. You know, it's, it's, it's bizarre. And some people say, oh, you know, it's awful. And yeah, cancer's pretty shit, but do you know what? It's also yeah. pretty good in some respects as well because I'm doing things now that I wouldn't have done if it hadn't have been for cancer. And also I would much right. rather have cancer than a mental illness because people are actually quite happy to be a friend with cancer. If I tell somebody I've got depression and I have had depression in the past, they're like, whoa, oh, don't want to know you. So it's, right. I feel really quite, it, it upsets me to a degree because people with mental illnesses are the ones that really need extra help and yeah I know that people with cancer also need help but you know what it's a it's an illness it's all an illness and everybody needs to help each other um so yeah yes, that, absolutely. it really resonates all of that and thank you very much for inviting me and say hello oh, to you I imagine wonderful. you must have a lovely wife oh she's she's my rock yeah oh yeah, yeah. she's I I couldn't have done this without her yeah. Do you have children as well? I got, yep. We have three kids between us. So I have a uh, 13, 16 and 18. (laughs) So keep you busy. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, well, lovely, lovely to meet you. And I wish you well. I hope all goes okay with chemo Monday. Thank you. Yeah, and yes, yeah. I'll be sending you Reiki. You send me your full name and it'll go in the book and you'll have regular Reiki that you won't even know about. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I'm going to send you that name, or my name right now on Instagram. But, uh, oh, thank you so much. I'm going to keep following you and uh, keep, you know, keep an eye on you and see what you're doing and new yeah. books that you're reading. Fantastic. And, and I'll, send over, I'll send over Emma's details and RCM, oh, yes. the wellness centre, so you can have a look at that. But, yeah, and I'll let Emma know, and I'm sure you'd love. She's amazing. She looks good. Yeah, she her talks Instagram, good. She's got an Instagram. And, yeah, she's, you know, yeah. she's a classical cellist, everything. She's just, wow, she, she amazes me. But, yeah, brilliant. Oh, right, you take I'd care. Have that. a lovely Interviewer. evening. Thank you. You too. And, yeah. See you later. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye. From the Cancer Suck Studios, that is a wrap. Check us out in future episodes of our podcast and be sure to subscribe. But before we go, just want to give a shout out to all the admirable and devoted caregivers out there. Until next time, stay strong. We got this. Because every once in a while, the lion has to show the jackals. Who is?